Hey, welcome everybody. I'm John Zadar. This is Monday. It's April 11th and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do here is I bring you OTC and penny stocks that I come across through the day doing my DD and trading. And I've got a few for you today. I've got some that have got, let's say, a fresh start. And I've also got a couple others that ran for peculiar reasons. But hey, money is money. So let me show you what I found today. So as is my habit, we're over here at the OTCmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I want information on an OTC stock. For one reason, really because it's updated every single day by the SEC and FINRA with the information I normally am looking for. So I don't waste my time with searches. I start here and then work out. So we are looking at a very peculiar stock today. This stock had no catalyst. That is to say there's no news. There are no disclosures. No need to even take you around looking at it. But this thing ran like crazy today and it's still kind of bouncing. Right now we have finished at just over 13 cents with 234% gains. She's pink, current, has a verified profile and a transfer agent, so she looks great in those regards. She's got the green ticks we're always looking for. She is a shell company. She's not doing any business. She's not making any revenue. She's not got anything set up, not getting anything set up. There's nothing going on, but something changed. And everybody's taking advantage of this change. Look. This is their regular volume, about 8,000 shares. Today they did 1.2 million. Now that may not be a big jump in your head, but that's over 130 times her normal volume. So what is the big deal? Well, there was some sort of change today that nobody can really put their finger on. Look at the share count here, folks. The shares changed. The outstanding shares are now at 1.1 million outstanding and most of those which isn't much are in the float 1.1 million that's the float 1.1 million well i went and looked at the most current disclosure this is what it was on february 16th what just two months ago at the most it was a half a billion shares in the outstanding not 1.1 million and it was 9.8 million in the float which is a great float but this is even better, 1.1 <laughs> million. I don't know what's going on here. I couldn't actually zoom in on it. I did come over here to disclosures. I did come down to these filings and started looking through them. I couldn't find anything. So we need some information. I don't know what's going on here, except that it's now got a super duper low float. It had a lot of trades today, and obviously it had a lot of volume and got a lot of gains. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. So we've jumped on over here to my favorite trading platform because it's free. <laughs> this is Think or Swim. You can get it too. Just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, keep your account open, and you can use this just like I am. So real quick, we're looking at PSCO, six month, four hour chart, been running downhill, hit a low bubble here about five days ago, was bouncing off of it, cutting through the 20 day, the 50 day SMA, and then took off today without catalyst just some weird change cut right through the 200 day sma and everything is launching underneath looking at the 20 day one hour well she's virtually just been climbing now we don't have no 20 days on here i don't believe that goes back to the 25th so we do so you can see how thinly she's been traded until today let's come on down to that five day five minute look so there it is, you've got four days right there. <laughs> and then you got all of today's trading activity. She doesn't get a lot of trades until today's freaky change came along and she jumped down here from just about four cents to a high today of, well, almost 17 cents. That is over 400% gains. And she did that by about one o'clock in the afternoon. So you had plenty of time to get in on this one. She dropped a little bit and settled down here at uh, 12 cents, 234, okay, 13 cents. So it really looks good, but there's no catalyst outside of the fact that she has a super duper low float and nobody knows what the H-E double toothpicks is going on. It just looks like an opportunity that nobody wants to miss out on. And to be honest, on the five minute right now, we have a crossover coming on the MACD. The RSI is over 60 in the area that I like to see it. The CCI, which most of you don't use, if it's above the yellow and pointed up, it is a good growth sign. You're gonna get growth, guaranteed. 
eight. So that is like right at the decisive point on a strong place to be. So I really like this. Let's look at the one minute just to see. All right, so she did have just a wee bit of pullback right at the end of the day. Volume was tapering off at the end of the day. It's a wild card, folks. Don't know what to tell you about it except low floats are very appealing because when they pop, they pop hard. So you may want to keep your eye on Mr. Popcorn here. I got another weird one for you. Check this one out. So now we're taking a look at PTAM. This is Potash America. Finished the day at 0 0.0115, just over 12% gains, but she had a bigger run this morning. She's pink current as a verified profile and a transfer agent. Looks great. Shell risk. They're supposed to be in business making some money, but they're not reporting any revenues. That's a problem, but that's not why we're here. Right now, there is a problem worldwide for fertilizer, and potash is one of the primary ingredients for fertilizer. And it turns out that most of our potash and most of our fertilizer, over 60% of it comes from the other side of the world. So we could have a problem here in America just getting food to grow without our fertilizers. So with a name like Potash America, you got to expect some growth. The problem is they don't work with potash. I came over to their local, uh, their local, <laughs> their most current disclosure, and it says right here, you can find this somewhere pretty close to the top, issuers business, products, and services. They got to tell you what they're doing now. So they tell us here, Potash America primarily focuses on industries such as renewable energy, commercial agriculture, green energy, technology, health and wellness, cannabis, hemp development, and environmentally responsible mining and exploration. Now, I suppose maybe here in commercial agriculture, uh, maybe in renewable energy, you might be able to squeeze in some sort of potash business. But I've gone through reading all of the information that they got here. And outside of the title of their name, potash is never, ever mentioned. So what's my point? The point is the name is all the DD that some people did. They didn't see anything else. Now, while we're here, you can see that her volume did jump from 2 million up to 17 million. Now, I can't guarantee you, I can't guarantee you that that's the reason. But when I looked at Twitter, that is what the tweets were talking about. Fertilizer company, potash uh, problem in the world. This company is one to keep your eye on. And I'm going, eh. So I actually posted what I just showed you there. I took a picture of that hat right there and I put that on Twitter because I don't want people being misguided so that is my opinion I may be wrong uh, their share structure isn't too bad they've got 79 million not fantastic it's not a one millioner but it's not bad so what was her gains today it wasn't 12% I think people caught on to the fact that she wasn't into the potash business but she did run strong first part of the day let's go take a look at that so we're taking a look at PTAM. This is a six month, four hour chart. It has been under the 200 day most of the time. And she started to jump and bounce here at the beginning of March. And I can't tell you why, because there really is no news, there's no catalyst. The company themselves aren't putting out any information. So what you're gonna see on the chart is going to be strictly market sentiment. So I could presume this has a lot to do with being potash company, working with fertilizer. It's been a big thing here recently so that could be what it's all about but that's just my presumption technicals look like they're pulling back just a wee bit because well she had a fall in the back half of the day if we look just straight to the five day five minute you can see that days before she's just been hugging the 50 day SMA she started to get a little bit of push up yesterday but this morning she took off she actually took off from about about a penny up to 2.7 cents. So you're talking 270% gains at the high. And at the high, that was about 11 o'clock in the morning. So there was lots of run there for a few hours and then more falling for the rest of the day. And we see our 200 day SMA just appears today. And coincidentally, that's where the price fell to. Maybe coincident, maybe not. A lot of times the price will go to the most dominant SMA when it appears because, well, traders play to it even subconsciously. So everything looks like it's on a downtrend right now, sitting 
passively on the 200. Doesn't show where it wants to go, but I don't think she's going to get any more run for a few days at least until the confusion starts up again. All right, let's go take a look at a stock that has had, well, let's call it a new beginning. Next up is Nugin, or is it Nugin? Well, ticker N-U-G-N, the name of the company is New Gene International. They finished the day at 12 cents, 33% gains. They're on the pink tier, clean and current, got a verified profile and a transfer agent, so they look good. Now, they are a shell risk. That means that they're in business and are not reporting any revenues. But when I went through all the news, yeah, they were in business years ago, and then there was this big, long, silent period, and now they've come back with a new management and a new direction. And I don't think the shell risk really comes into play, but it is part of the dirty laundry and they will have to take care of it and they plan to. So what does this company do? Well, <laughs> if you read the business description, they do a lot more than they tell us in the news and there's only two pieces of news for this year. And the most current piece of news next to that is all the way back in 2017. So I have a hard time believing that this is really accurate, but they tell us here, Levento Group is a company specializing in the development and growth of disruptive business models. We develop proprietary artificial intelligence and machine learning products that incorporate risk analysis, predictive maintenance, and operational forecasting into our decision-making process. I ain't seen nothing like that. Our main areas of focus though are real estate development in the rapidly developing European cities. Nope, that's not there either. And the production of premium film and television content. Ding, 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 we got a winner. That's all these two pieces of press releases talk about is TV and movies and lots of money. It caught a lot of attention today, the news, and the relative volume pretty much shows that. She jumped from just under 3 million to just shy of 11 million. Not a fantastic jump, but you're now going from single digit millions up to double digit millions. You're gonna get some good price increases there. What is the share structure on this company? Not bad. We got 158 million. I know we'd like to have these great low flows, but seriously, that is a good float. 800 million, 900, a billion shares. Man, that's pretty common amongst OTC penny stocks. So I like that float. Financials, we're not going to find anything over there, but we'll look. They tell us that she's a shell company, but when you see zeros instead of dashes, that means they're at least filing. If you see a dash, it means we don't know what the heck's going on. A zero, They've told us that they've got zero. Disclosures, I don't know if they've got anything current for us to peek at here. They filed for supplemental information for a change in shell status. Bravo, when did that come out? That came out at the end of last month. So they're trying to get rid of that shell status because as I told you, they're in a whole new phase now. I mean, you just gotta say, we're not doing that anymore. We're doing this, can we start fresh? A new semester. Sec filings, no. Nothing new down there. So let's take a look at the news. So as I said, they've only got two pieces of news. 2017 was the last bit of news we had before 2022. And it seems like they were into medical products, a hair for fortifying serum. <laughs> Ain't none of that come up either. We have two pieces of news here. New Gene International Inc. provides shareholder update and announces change of control. This is the first big piece of news. So this piece of news came out March 17th of this year. New Gene International announces the completion of change in control with Levento Group. We just saw their name in the description. Levento Group has confirmed a change of Nuggins business model, redirecting its focus to the film and television industry. Levento currently has contracts with a production company that produces films for Netflix and Prime Video. In addition to co-producing large budget films worldwide with top actors, actors in the film industry. To date, they have produced and co-produced 16 films on Netflix, the latest of which was released September 3rd. Now they tell us here that their immediate focus in the coming weeks is the removal of the shell status and to get audited financials in and submit a 10Q. And we just saw the shell status filing going in. So they are getting the ball moving. Now, the one thing nobody has said here, which it really is, is a reverse merger. Even the person who is in business with them getting rid of the dicker. I am impressed with their management's experience and am honored to be providing them with a public vehicle that will bring their vision to the next level. 
This is a reverse merger, simple as that. And that's what's got everyone's excitement. But there's more to it. Oh, there's a lot more. Check out the news that came out today. Noon launches next generation premium entertainment with subsidiary Boxo Productions. Levento Group LLC announced today the launch of Boxo Productions, its new film and television production subsidiary. Boxo already has amassed a catalog of star-studded award-winning movies featuring Hollywood legends and Oscar winners like Al Pacino, Michael Caine, John Malkovich, Samuel L. Jackson, Pierce Bronson, Ed Harris. Several major projects are in the works for the company, including films starring Johnny Depp, Morgan Freeman, Kate Blanchett, Nicole Kidman, Gwyneth Paltrow, wow, some names, huh? Edward Norton, Christian Bale, Brad Pitt, Bradley Cooper, Dustin Hoffman, Scarlett Johannesson, amongst many others. We it, now this is the important part. We expect to generate approximately 50 million U.S. dollars global box office sales per movie over the next three years, with a product target of six Hollywood movies per year. Well, if you're going to get 50 million dollars per movie, and you're going to get six movies out this year, you have just gone from shell status to 300 million dollars. That is a huge jump. And the last little goodie they give us here, Boxo plans to release 10 to 12 television series on Netflix Prime Video in 2022. Folks, that's happening right now. 10 to 12 television series. Somebody's kicking butt. They've got a lot going on here. It's not one movie every six months or something. They've got multiple movies. They've got multiple television shows, big actors. I'm pretty impressed here. I honestly am. This company's just got things going and they've thrown out some big numbers there and I've had to calculate that. They didn't come out and tell us 300 million, but you can do the math, right? So there was a lot of activity around this stock today and I think it's worthy of looking at for the long run. So let's go take a look at that chart. Wowzy! That is N-U-G-N, six-month, four-hour chart. And you know, beside that jolly green giant stock we got going on right there, she doesn't look bad. I mean, I see she's had some rolls, ups and downs, but folks, she has been climbing. Though it be ever so gently and ever so slowly, she has been climbing. Not just the price, but look at the volume. The volume is picking up. It had a little lull right here, but it is climbing and getting stronger. And as the volume increases, so is the price action, as is the price. We got a strong MACD, strong RSI. Everything looks brilliant on the four hour chart. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour. So now we are on top of the 200, bouncing off of it, not much, getting on top of the 50 now. You want to get up on the lighter SMAs. The lighter the SMA you're bouncing on, the faster your price seems to go up. So she's on the 50 here, launches off of the 50, abandons the 20, doesn't even give it a chance, and jumps onto the 10 bandwagon and is off and running. Look at that MACD. That is beautiful. Escalator. And she's been on fire all day. The RSI has just been up there, as has the CCI. Above the green is fantastic. That is outstanding, so everything was really good on the hourly. Let's come down to that five day, five minute. So she is very planted for the last uh, four days before the last two days. The last two days, she did start climbing. There was no catalyst yesterday. There was no news. Funny, I've been noticing this a lot. Day before news comes out, there seems to be some climb in a lot of these stocks. Like some people know something. Hmm, wish I could get in on that. But today, the news did come out. So yesterday, she did rise from oh, almost six cents up to nine and a half cents. So she had a big rise yesterday of at least 50%. And she held it. I mean, look, she stuck right across the top, didn't give any of it away, went straight across until she met the 50 and then bounced off the 50, even during pre-market, after-market hours right there. Yeah, she did some serious climbing, so the news must have come out early. Some places you can actually get a time on there, but it's really difficult to see. But she came out of the gate running. She then came down, landed on the 50, which is where she started the day before, and pretty much got her balance on the 50 until she launched 
the second half of her gain, and she dropped at the very end of the day, even after market, where to? <laughs> Back to her 50. So for all of her traveling up and down, she's only doing this radical bouncing on the 50 now. So watch the 50, looks like she's gonna come down to that. I would expect her to bounce off the 50, but in saying that, we've got weak MACD, cross down, RSI, ooh. Under the red means it's gonna fall. Anything down that low means the price is coming down. So I would expect this to actually come down a little bit further. Probably below the 50, and then you're gonna to have to watch it and just see. If she gets below the 50, there's a very good likelihood that she could get down to the 200, wherever it is at that time. Just a feeling. However, in saying that, we can always consider that 50% mark, which we haven't drawn on any of these stocks. What I mean is you go from the bottom of the surge to the top of the surge, find the center. If you can get perfect, that's great because you know what? That's what algorithms work on, perfect averages. And that's all we're doing is looking for the perfect average in the center. I can see I'm a little bit low, but it doesn't matter because we're only trying to get a ballpark idea here. We are well above the 50, right? She's come down and look, I didn't even take notice of that. I was not looking. It's sitting on the 50%. She went all the way up and gave away 50% of her gains and landed right there. That looks good to me. I honestly would not expect her to come down any further. I know the 50-day SMA is there, but I'm looking at my 50% line, which I consider a pretty golden rule. So she's sitting pretty. She could come down. Don't think I'm saying she won't. Technicals look like she very well could test the 50 and she could come below that. If she does, it's going to be a buying opportunity, right? This company's just getting their stuff going right now. So everything looks good off the chart and on the chart. The next fresh start stock we're taking a look at is PDPG, Performance Drink Group. Finished today just over 3 cents, 0 0.0324, 36% gains. They're on the pink tier and current. Got all their green ticks over there, so they look good. Now, they've got a stock promotion going on right now, so that could be helping the price to go up. This basically is paying people to write about them, talk about them. It's not a pump and dump. It's just, well, you see this shell? here, they're a self-proclaimed shell company. They're not making any money. The company's not doing any business. But about a year ago, they changed their name and they changed their direction. But there's been no news. They've really been working stealth. But here recently, they put out a couple of news presses, including today, and there has been some activity around this company. So the new company, Performance Drink Group, manufactures and retails performance sports beverages, and they want to be a little bit different about this. And I'll let the news kind of explain that. So as I said, there was some strong attention to this stock today. It had about 420 trades. Did 162,000 trades regularly for the last 30 days. Today she did 4.5 million. So you've got roughly 25 times her normal volume there. And hopefully we got a low float over here. Oh, oh, yes, we do. See, I don't actually go through all this information before I talk to you. I want to make it a mutual virgin experience so we both get the same excitement. So we've got another low float here of just about 13 million. And look at that. Look at the outstanding shares. 393 million and there's only 13 million. That's 380 million shares are for the insiders. That's management and whoever's investing in this company. And if you want to know who's investing, all you got to do is come over here to the disclosures and inside their annual report or their quarterly report, though the annuals are better, they'll give you a list of every single investor or debt holder who's holding shares in this company. So you can see who owns what. And that can be a big deal. We got nothing here. They're current. That should be all up to date, but we have no new sec filings. So let's go take a look at that news. Now, there really isn't too much news here. We got five pieces of news, and one of them comes from 2012. The next one is virtually 10 years later in 2021 of March. The funny thing is, both pieces of news have to do with changing the company's name, but they were different names each time. Hole in One Organics changed their name to something, but it wasn't Liberty International. But Liberty International just changed their name to Performance Drink Group. But as I said, that was March of last year. And there is no news until February of this year. So whatever they've been doing, they've been doing in stealth.
Then you get this piece of news with they now tell us what their plans are. They're going into sports beverages. They are going to work in the beverage market, but they're focused on sports beverages because last year alone, there was over $60 billion worth of sports beverage sales in the world. And it's growing at a clip of about $5 billion more every year. So they see it as a good market, but they want to come at it in a different way. They want to work at it where the ingredients are totally healthy for you, not dealing with all the sugars and whatever else they're putting in there. So they've got their own concepts that they want to work on. Then you have here in March, another month goes by, Performance Drink Group signs joint venture LOI with new European partner focused on research and development. Let's take a look at that. So this news came out March 7th, Performance Drink Group, a new force in the manufacturing of unique sports nutrition and energy drinks, today announces a signed letter of intent toward the establishment of a joint venture with a new EU-based partner that specializes in research and development. Ah, that's going to get them international. Further details about the JV will be released over the coming days and weeks. So they're not going to tell us who the company is. Maybe they can't. Maybe that's part of the deal right now. The goal of this partnership is to target game-changing research and development rooted in a very broad spectrum, sampling of natural ingredients including olives, nuts, honeys, and of course, cannabis-based products. Once the definitive agreement has been signed by all parties, this venture stands to give Performance Drink Group access to stable, growing revenue streams spanning multiple continents, capable of lasting long into the future, underpinned by strong intellectual property protection. According to the company's industry analysis, this dominant innovation channel in the market has traditionally been about new flavors. But innovation is now starting to come in other areas where consumers are demanding improvements that push beyond flavor and into the domain of core ingredients that make up the functional value of the drinks themselves. Lovett added, once these products have been developed and protected, we believe they will represent a game-changing step for an industry that currently remains very limited in its ability to offer consumers products free of negative health side effects. I am particularly interested in how research might disrupt the cannabis drink industry. So there is a big insight to what the company is doing. And the other piece of news is big because this is a guy they've brought in as their new senior vice president who has some serious experience right in this sector. Performance Drink Group adds top industry veteran James Gracely as new SVP. They tell us here from April 11th, the company is pleased to announce the hiring of James Gracely, a senior executive with more than 20 years experience in the beverage health and wellness industry as the company's new senior vice president. During his tenure at Bang, James helped grow the annual sales company from under $80 million to over $1 billion and achieved snagging up 10% of the energy beverage market. That is impressive goes on to say that previously James was an integral part of the foundation that created Ignite Beverages, where he was responsible for a suite of Ignite products for domestic and international markets, including beverages, CBD products, and vape. With James on board, Ignite turned a $10 million loss in 2019 into a $20 million profit in 2020. That's a $30 million movement in one year very impressive. James is a game changer and we are truly excited to bring him on board as our new SVP. So you've got product, you've got research and development working those products, they're ready to patent these products, and you got someone who knows how to sell these products. And it's all new, it's all fresh, and it is taking off. There's a lot of people looking at this. So let's go take a look at the chart and see what opportunities it avails. There she blows, PDPG, six month, four hour chart. And the two standouts, by all means, is that volume jump, huge. Look at that compared to the rest. It is gigantic, a lot of excitement today on the news. Then you've got this price jump. That is a thousand percent. It jumps from 20 cents up here to $2.10, actually more than a thousand percent. But I can't tell you why. The news we looked at for this year starts in March. This run is at the end of January, start of February. 
so I haven't got a clue why it jumped or why it fell. But it has fallen all the way down here to just over two cents as a low. Folks, the high was $2.10. That is over 20,000% difference there. That's a lot of ceiling that you can grab up. And speaking of grabbing up ceiling, the SMA has appeared above us at about uh, 29, 28 cents. We have seen over and over again when a strong dominant SMA appears on the chart, in many cases the price starts to play to it, whether it be below or above. So maybe it'll play up to this one. Let's go take a look at that 20 day, one hour chart. Well, we got a 200 day SMA coming in on this one too. This one's at 21 cents. Play on, get on up there. The price has been underneath all the SMAs, even under the 10. She had a poke here trying to get near the 50, but I think it was just a touch to make sure she didn't drop too fast, too far. She hit that low bubble, paid no mind to it until she had the news. And then she jumped through all the SMAs on top of the 50 day. She came back down underneath it and all day she has been cleaving to that 50 day like a child to its mother. Let's come on over to that five day, five minute. So that was a fast jump, folks. First five minutes she hit her high. There was probably no way that you were going to get into this. And it's probably a good thing because she fell. She fell fast. And look, folks, she started. Her close yesterday was about two cents, a little over two cents. And she went up to just under seven cents. So you're looking at over 300% gains. And she ended the day under 40% gains. So... Good thing you didn't get in here. She did fall down to the 20 day SMA here. Probably would have stuck there until the 50 day SMA came into the picture. And look, she abandoned the 20 and went straight to the 50. Then abandoned the 50, but at the very end of the day, we had a big chunk of volume. 635,000 shares to be exact. Pushed the price up over the 50 day. Got an imminent crossover right there. CCI looks good. That's pointing up going towards the green and the RSI is a little plancid. So it looks like there could be another bounce coming. There's a lot of news coming with this. It too has a fresh start. So I like this one. I think they're going to go places. But of course, folks, do your own DD. Well, it seems to me we might want to call this show Fresh Starts and Freaks. You know, you can't tell what's going to make a stock run. Of course, catalysts in the news is a good indicator, but there can be a lot of things on the sidelines, in the background, things you just can't see, things you don't know, which is why I love going to Twitter. Twitter is a great place to get some insight to things you just can't see yourself. And even if they don't understand why it's happening, at least they're letting you know it's happening. Folks, D D comes in a lot of shapes, forms, sizes, and colors. But the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Hey.